Hello and welcome to the Anxious Knitter Podcast. My name is Joy and I am the Anxious Knitter. I'm so anxious that every time we have to leave Opie home alone and we give him one of those toys that you stuff treats in, I always have these terrible pangs of paranoia that he's going to choke on one of those treats while we're gone and die and I'm going to come home and my dog's going to be dead. And that's why everything gets cut up into teeny tiny little pieces. Anyway, hello, you're here for episode 27. Like I said, my name is Joy, and I'm coming to you from Waterloo, Ontario, Canada, where I live with my husband Luke and our dog Opie. This is a podcast mostly about knitting, but sometimes about crochet, sewing, spinning, hand dyeing, and whatever other crafty thing catches my fancy at the moment. Uh, If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back, especially after my hiatus. And if you are a brand new viewer just stumbling on my little corner of the internet for the first time, welcome and I hope you find something that you like. Um, But yeah, so hi guys. (laughs) What year is it? I don't know. Uh, It's been a while. It's been a while. I know. And I'm back in my office, which I'm not sure in hindsight was the best choice. I'm looking a little green, (laughs) but um, it was just easier with all the stuff that I have uh, to talk about. Um, To having it around me on the floor or whatever. So yeah. Um... It's been something like two months now since my last episode, uh, and not for lack of trying, guys, okay? Um, Let me tell you something in lieu of a dweeb story. Uh, (laughs) Let me tell you about the recording debacles I've had over the last two months. It is not because I haven't sat down to record. This is, in fact, the sixth time I have recorded this episode sixth time. If it doesn't work, I'm going to lose my mind. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Of course, you won't see this if uh, it doesn't work. But if you are seeing it, then it did work. And hooray. (laughs) Um, I don't know what it was. Uh, I'm starting to think that I have a curse or a ghost because I did so many test recordings. I record an iMovie directly into iMovie from my webcam. And um, I would run it for an hour, my webcam, and it would work. Like just while I was on the computer or watching TV or whatever, just to see if it would record for an hour. And it did. And I, I tried recording two chunks of 30 minutes to see if that worked. It did. And then I would sit down sometimes uh, either the next day or sometimes minutes later after finishing the test recording um, to, uh, to record for real and uh, it wouldn't work. It would disappear. Sorry, I was just picking old washi tape off my desk. Uh, gross. It's not really gross. It's just, it's washi tape. Um, it is not unhygienic. Anyway, the point is It just seemed like every time I sat down to record in earnest and I got my face all done and I dressed nice, my computer would be like, "Uh nope, not gonna work. Why do you need it to work? Uh, Weren't the crappy test recordings you did not enough? No, computer, they weren't enough. And I mean, I cleared off my hard drive. I deleted all my previous episodes. I deleted Lightroom off my computer um, to clear up space, thinking maybe it was a space issue clearly wasn't a space issue. So now I'm recording in QuickTime uh, and hopefully that will work and I can just import it into iMovie. But um, yeah, so much has happened. So much knitting has been done. Um, and I'm, I'm here to talk about it and hopefully not go on forever. I have sort of chosen a selection of things to talk about um, and I probably will race through a few of them just because some of them are not uh, in need of a whole lot of conversation. Um, but uh, yeah, I have so many things to show you. Um, so let's just get started. And actually, you know what? I will share a dweeb story because why not? All right, you ready for my first segment? Which is the dweeb story of the week. Also, I'd just like to point out before I start my dweeb story that it is very strange to me because the QuickTime is like taking up my whole computer screen and I'm not used to seeing my face that big while I record, but that's neither here nor there. So dweeb story. On Friday the 13th of October, Luke and I went to Toronto. (laughs) Can you tell like I've told this story six times? Um, 
we went to Toronto to celebrate, belatedly, our, our fifth wedding, wedding anniversary. Uh, we were we got married on September 29th. Um, so we went to the AGO, which is the Art Gallery of Ontario, if you don't know, um, cause they had a Guillermo del Toro exhibit on and we both love del Toro. Del Toro is to adult me what Tim Burton was to teenage me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we were really excited to see his, um, his, uh, Bleak House exhibit. It was amazing. Side note. But because we were going to Toronto and we were going to be gone all day, not knowing when we were going to get home, we put Opie in boarding for the night. And uh, he goes to this really, really nice kennel. But again, not, not neither here nor there. Words coming out of my mouth. So we drop him off and we're coming into the parking lot. It was just a little dirt lot. And I see this car and it's got like its little tail lights on. Because it's on, I guess. I don't know. I don't know nothing about cars, okay? And I just had this, like, weird feeling about the car where I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna give them a little bit of extra room just in case they don't see me and they start to, like, back out. Well, guys, it's a good thing that I did give them that extra three or four feet of space because if I hadn't, they would have run me right over. And I'm not, like, talking, like, nudging me. I mean, they jetted out of their parking spot so fast um, that... I had to jump out of the way of the car, even given the extra space. My coat brushed the bumper of the car. And even after, Luke and I were both like, hey, whoa, watch it. He just drove away. Or she did. I don't know who was in the car. They just drove away. They didn't stop to be like, oh my gosh, so sorry that I almost hit you with my car. I don't even think they noticed. They just peeled out of that driveway. So really, I guess it's not a dweeb story. Uh, is a near-death experience story. Not even really. That's, that's a little melodramatic, Joy. Take it down a notch. Um, but yeah, so my uh, wonderful day trip to Toronto for my anniversary could have ended up in an emergency room visit instead. Very exciting. And uh, oddly enough, on our way home, we got stuck behind a huge accident. Um, and we were stopped for, like, almost an hour. Like, car turned off. People getting out of their cars to see if they could see what was going on. You couldn't see what was going on. So, I don't know. It was a very dramatic thing. All of it. Also, this lighting. You can see the dark circles under my eyes. And you know what? That's actually just the way my eyes are. Oh, well. Whatever. It's aging for you. Um, not that I'm old or anything. Maybe I'm actually 60 and I uh, just come off really young. You'd never know. Just kidding. I'm not. I'm 27. Um, yeah, let's get into some more content. Let's just keep going. Um, uh, let's talk announcements. So that's my next segment. What do I do for that? It's been so long. Hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> I'm so, like, I have this manic energy because I'm like, oh God, if it doesn't work. <laughs> Um, yeah, so announcements. Uh, I have a couple. First of all, uh, if you'll remember over the summer, <laughs> we did a West Knits along, um, which closed in September. And, um, it, I did actually already pick a winner and I did, um, I did contact them and I did send them their prize already. Um, just cause I was like, this can't go on any longer. I feel so bad. These people have been waiting for so long. I'm the worst podcaster. But again, everyone's so nice, they don't pester. Oh, sorry, my computer was about to go black. That's silly, I never did that in iMovie. Um, yeah, so uh, it was Tui. The winner was Tui, who I believe is Taya in Finland, I'm pretty sure. So um, everyone, extend your congratulations to Taya. Uh, she has since received her skein of Pretty Twisted Yarns. Um, other than that, I don't have any immediate plans for another knit along. Um, I was thinking about uh, in the next few months doing the freer fade, the three color fade. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that. Um, but when I decide to do a faded, um, a faded pattern, I will host a late to the party fade along because I know ages ago there was a request for that. Um, and you can do any faded pattern, so I mean, keep that in mind if it's something you've been thinking about. It'll be in the next few months. Um, 
And then I also kind of wanted, uh, sorry, I think I got it. Uh, classy as heck. Um, I also wanted to do something like a That's So 90s knit along. So, um, you could like do any kind of project as long as it uses like at least one skein of yarn or most of a skein of yarn. That, uh, could, it could be like a 90s pattern, um, a colorway that's named after something in the 90s, like a Buffy, um, or, um, I know some, there are some dyers that do like Lisa Frank colorways, that sort of thing, uh, or a skein of yarn even that's inspired, uh, that like, or a color palette inspired by your favorite 90s album cover or 90s movie poster or whatever. Um, as long as you can justify it, uh, I'll count it. <laughs> um, so that's going to be somewhere down the pipeline. Um, but again, no immediate plans. I have so much stuff on the needles right now. I don't even have all of it here to show you because there's just so many projects on the needles because Christmas knitting has begun. Um, and the last thing I wanted to talk about in the announcement section, um, and I will touch on it a little bit, a little bit more later, is, um, some Cabinet of Curios news. So, uh, Luke and I have opened a Etsy shop called Cabinet of Curios Hand Dyed Yarns and Accessories where we sell hand dyed yarn, um, polymer clay stitch markers, and uh, project bags. And um, we opened on September 25th and I never got a chance because of my technical difficulties to uh, just share with you how grateful um, we are. It was an amazing launch. We sold most of the product and it's slowly clearing out now. Um, and we've been working on our next um, updates worth of stuff. So I will talk about that more um, at the end of the podcast. But I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who who bought something and said something or said something kind um, about what we were selling. Um, even if you weren't able to purchase anything, but you just left a really nice comment on our uh, Instagram page, it means the world to us. And we were just so excited. Um, I was actually at my parents' place the night that we opened. And um, I just spent like the whole night like with a big smile on my face and my mom being like, oh, what did this person buy? What did this person buy? Oh, where is it going? And it was so cool to be sending stuff to Australia and New Zealand and Faroe Islands and like the UK, like it blew my mind. Um, and uh, so yeah, that was super exciting. And um, we look forward to getting some more stuff up in the shop for you guys soon. Um, but again, I will talk about that later. Uh, so yeah, let's get into the knitting content, shall we? So I feel kind of like, there we go. That's slightly better. Oh, I look so pale. Um, let's get into the knitting content. Let's start with uh, me cleaning my teeth. Finished objects! <laughs> um, gosh, I have so many of them. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with the simplest finished object that I have, which is um, it was part of my Halloween costume. So you may have seen it on Instagram or part of it. Um, Luke and I went as pilots this year just to hand out candy. I, I needed something warm because we were sitting outside to hand out candy to all 14 kids that walked by. Um, but anyway, they were super excited. So, uh, I decided to crochet an aviator hat and I cannot for the life of me remember the pattern, but of course I will put it up on the screen. Um, I, I can never put it on accurately, but, um, I really love this. This took about two sittings. I, and, um, I had both of our hats done in two days, but yeah, so, um, I'd never knit, uh, I'd never crocheted a hat before. All I've ever crocheted are blankets and scarves. So that was a really fun experience. And now it makes me want to crochet like the amigurumi stuff because I feel like it's sort of a similar principle. Um, but I just used some acrylic from Michael. So this, uh, the tweed is a Vanna's Choice. Uh, the gray is a Loops and Threads. And ooh, the bulky I think is Lion Brand. Thick and quick, maybe. But I mean, it's just bulky weight yarn. Um, and the only thing that I really modified from the pattern for this hat was I added the little like ear bumps because I just thought it added an extra touch. And for Luke's, I actually did different goggles. So instead of doing the one piece, I did two big circles and then I did the, um, the white borders and like a little white thing across here. So we were just slightly different. We, I just didn't make the exact same hat twice, but uh, yeah, so that was so fun. Um, I don't really knit with acrylic anymore. Um, 
and I don't really work with acrylic anymore, but um, Vanish Choice is really good. I like Vanish Choice. Like, actually, no, I have not one other thing that wasn't a, a crocheted, sorry, crocheted one other thing that wasn't a blanket. I crocheted a little shawl inspired by Jane Eyre, but I don't even, and it's actually the same yarn. <laughs> Um, I really like brown tweed, apparently. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, and I kind of want to crochet some more like fun costume hats. Just have. <laughs> They're so fast. Can you imagine like making these for kids? This would take like an hour for like a baby hat. Fantastic. So yeah, I made two of those. My next <laughs> finished object is a pair of socks. I hadn't talked about them in a while because I hadn't worked on them in a while, but they are finally done. And that is my, or those are my, Devil Snare Socks, which is a pattern by Erica Luter, who of course you will recognize that name because she did Hermione's Everyday Socks. This is another free Harry Potter inspired pattern. It's a lace sock. So you can see the Devil Snare pattern going down. Very simple, I think it was 10 rows, um, but you really kind of get the feel for, for how it works because you're all doing the same thing every time. Um, the yarn I used was, um, like and lace seagrass for the heels, toes, and cuffs. And I actually got three projects out of that yarn. I knit um, Luke a sock head hat. Um, I used it for heel heels, toes, and cuffs for my Weasley rib socks, and now for these. And then the main colorway is Knitter Scarlet um, in the Peach Pie colorway, and it's a it's a wool blend. It's not merino, so it it's got more. It's a little sturdier feeling. It's more like a regia, um, but it's so fun. It was a variegated yarn, but it at my gauge, I guess, it knit up almost perfectly striped. I just love that. Oh, it never gets old. Um, yeah, so I finally got them off the needles. I picked it up, I'm like, I need to finish these socks. I had maybe like this much left to do. It took me a, like a day and a half. So now I'm very happy to have them. They're beautiful, they're one of my favorite pairs, um, and that yarn was a lovely gift um, from Kath the Dyer, and um, I appreciate it so much. So I will think about that kind of gift every time I get to wear these lovely socks. I'm even thinking about saving them for Christmas, to wear them for Christmas. Who knows? I probably won't be able to wait that long. Um, my next finished object is a hoe, uh, another sock, obviously, um, which is this sock, which is a plain vanilla sock. Um, and the yarn is The Loving Path, um, who is which is dyed by Debbie, my lovely, lovely Debbie. Um, and she actually just started a podcast and it's so good. I think she's three episodes out now. Um, her knitting is so inspiring. I don't know, like her color work sweaters. I think the one, I think it was the Radari she showed in her first episode. I just want to knit it. Um, but yes, she dyed this yarn for me. It's called Joy, um, inspired. Inspired by my love of navy and red lipstick. So yeah, I think that's so fun. Um, I really loved seeing how this knit up. I like this like sort of zigzaggy pull going down and then the micro stripe. I think it's so much fun. I know people like don't always like pooling, but especially like, with socks, I think it's so much fun to just see what the like yarn is gonna do. Do you know what I mean? Like who cares? Yeah, it sucks. Who's like, Who's going to look at your socks and be like, I don't know about that. Most people are just super impressed by hand knit socks to begin with. And I think pooling is hilarious and fun sometimes. So anyway, love it. Um, I haven't cast on the second one yet because I had cast on my Halloween socks. Did they get done for Halloween? No, they did not. But I will talk about that later. So there's that. I have three garment finished objects to show you, um, a few of which you've seen on Instagram, so I won't talk about them for too long. Um, but I will start with uh, my Mount Pleasant Tea, which is a pattern by Pippin Pin or Megan Nodecker, uh, who also has a podcast. Uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, I love Megan's podcast. Um, I knit this in my own hand dyed yarn. This isn't currently offered in the shop. <laughs> Um, but it will be at some point. Um, and I dyed it on my uh, herbarium base, which is 80% Superwash BFL and 20% silk. So it has a lovely sheen. I loved knitting with this yarn um, and I love the finished product. 
it was a super easy, super quick knit with an amazing result. Um, I learned how to do a three needle bind off. Um, and yeah, and then I actually used um, the sloped bind off for the shoulders, for the neckline, um, which I learned from one of my other finished objects. So yeah, uh, I love it so much. I'm hoping to get some wear out of it this winter, maybe with a long sleeve black tee on underneath and um, like a dress or a skirt with it. Um, I do kind of wish I had knitted a little bit longer, um, but it's fine. I will probably knit this again, and if I do, I will knit it a little bit longer. But um, yeah, I think it's really pretty, and I and it was so fast, and um, I knit it. So I did the large size because I wanted more of that like boxy fit. I mean, look at what I'm wearing right now, giant sweater. Um, I wanted more of a boxy fit, and. Uh, but I didn't want the full amount of ease that it would have given me. So what I did um, is I, instead of knitting the lace on a 3.5 and the body on a 3.75, I think it was, I knit the whole thing on a 3.5 and it gave me, I think, just the right amount of ease. So, yeah. I love this colorway. I just, it's everything. I love orange. Um... <laughs> So yeah, so that's my Mount Pleasant Tea. Oh, and I knit that um, as part of Susan of the Knit Lib Podcast Cropped Top Cow. And I, I don't know if she's opened a finished objects thread, but if she has, I need to get that in there. Um, and my next finished object is my Good Sweater by Julie Hoover, which I knit in custom woolen mills yarn in their Mule Spun 2-ply yarn. You really can on camera see that line and it bugs me every time I've held this up. Uh, this is a seamed bottom up sweater. Um, I learned many new things. Um, I am pretty pleased with how it turned out. I need to steam it because I think the seams are a little bit wrinkly. <laughs> Ignore my silly terrible weaving in of ends. I, I seamed it with some sock yarn, Regia sock yarn, and not with the mule spun because it is a single ply yarn. Did I say it was a two ply yarn? It's not. It's the one ply. Um, which, this sweater it calls for fingering weight, but um, uh, if you ever buy this yarn, just know that it's really more of a sport weight. Um, I love this yarn. I love the sweater. In hindsight, do I think that this was the best yarn for the sweater? Honestly, no. I don't. Um, I think I would have preferred something with a linen, with linen content. I had originally wanted to knit this sweater in uh, Mano Silk Orway Milo, which is a sport weight, but it is a merino, I think, merino linen blend. But I decided to go with this because it was a little more inexpensive, and by a little more I mean a lot, a lot less expensive. Um, but I'm still pretty happy with it. It's very wooly. I personally don't have a problem wearing it against my skin, but I know some people probably would. There was some vegetable matter in the yarn. I don't mind that either. I just pull it out as I come to it. Um, but it is really pretty, like, tweedy green, which is very beautiful. I would love to knit another sweater out of this yarn, uh, maybe something with texture. But um, weirdly enough, on their website lately, I mean, maybe it's changed now, but they hadn't been offering any of their colors. Um, they only have white on a cone. And now when I was ordering this yarn, they did only have cones they didn't sell in skeins but I got three skeins because they were like oh we have three skeins of that color lying around in the same dialogue do you want that instead and I said sure um but they aren't offering their colors of it right now so I'm not entirely sure why that is but anyway um yeah uh seeming this was an adventure it took me about five or six hours um oh and here's a tip if you ever knit this sweater this sweater uses a collar extension as opposed to short rows I think to bring the neckline up it's cool detail, um, and the way it works is you have your like extension and then you graft it, which I did another terrible job of, but whatever. Um, so when I was seaming it, I seamed at the sides and the one side was great and the other side was not so great, but whatever. Um, and then I was seaming the top, because you have to seam the collar extension to here. And I started at one end and I seamed all the way across to about here. And I realized that my seaming was so off that the one edge was like way back here. You couldn't even, you couldn't fudge it. So I had to take it all out. And what I did and what I would 
perhaps advise you to do, not that I'm an expert, but it worked for me, was I took the, the seam of my Kitchener stitch and I matched it up with the point of the V and then I pinned it with sewing pins and then I seamed from the center out. This may be obvious to people who are more seasoned than I, but um, I just thought I'd throw that out there if you um, are thinking about knitting it. So yeah, that was the good sweater. Um, I do not have any desire to knit a uh, seamed pullover anytime soon. <laughs> um, I just, oh, oh my gosh. Uh, that being said, I do want to knit the Carrie Town pullover, which is seamed, but it seems like it might be an easier seaming job than this one was. I don't know why, but whatever. Um, yeah, so here's my other one, my other finished object. <laughs> hey guys, remember this uh, from Instagram? Maybe you do. Okay, let me tell you about the drama that surrounded this. Actually, before I do that, let me just check what time I'm at. Okay. Hopefully, oh my god, this better work. Um, yes, this is the Branches and Buds Pullover by Carrie Bostick Hogue. Uh, wonderful pattern. Um, again, it has really made the rounds. And um, so, I, so I knit this, uh, the gray is Cascade 220. Uh, no, Cascade, yeah, Cascade 220 Sport, although it doesn't have 220, 220 yards in it. I don't know why they call it that. Um, and then the cream is Eco Andean DK, which I don't know how anybody knits a DK sweater with that yarn. It, like, I get almost fingering weight gauge on that with that yarn. I love it, but it's definitely not DK. Um, but anyway, so I had been wanting to knit. I had actually originally gone into the local yarn store to buy Let Low Be to knit an Afmeli sweater or a Skogia Fall. Skogyafal sweater, the one with the pine trees, but they didn't have any Let Lopi. And you know, I was like, you know, I have been dying to knit this sweater since it came out. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna buy the yarn for that instead. So we did. Um, and I think it's a charcoal gray. And then I started knitting it, was loving the knit, but I was knitting it going, I don't know about this color of the gray. It looked awful to me when I was knitting it at first. I was like, it just looked flat, it looked too blue, and I think it was because there was a warmer, like, brown tone in the Eco Andean, and a cooler tone in the gray, and it wasn't sitting right with me. And, um, and so I got, I had gotten to pass, like, I'd separated for the sleeves, and also my gauge was so weird, so I did an in-the-round gauge swatch, and I got, like, a worsted weight gauge almost, like, it was, like, 18 or 19 stitches per four, four inches, and I was like, how is this possible? I'm getting the same gauge with my sport weight yarn that I was getting for um, a different gauge swatch with like regular Cascade 220. It was bizarre. So I, I decided to knit the 36 thinking, um, oh, well, my gauge is like loose, so it'll be bigger. It'll work out. So I had gotten to here and I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I like this. I post on Instagram saying I'm going to frog it. I didn't frog it right away. I put it on waist yarn. I went to Shall We Knit and I bought new yarn. <laughs> I bought a different sweaters quantity of Barocco Vintage DK, um, which is a yarn that I do enjoy and I'll talk about that again later. But I started knitting the sweater and I didn't like it. I didn't like the way the yarn looked either and I was so frustrated. And then the next day I tried on what I had of this and two things appeared to me. One, I definitely didn't need to knit a size down. I could definitely have knit the size up because when I measured my gauge swatch, uh, this, I, I was like 26 stitches per inch. So I don't know how I gained seven stitches per inch, not per inch, per four inches, but um, I, I did somehow. I'm a tight knitter. So that's why I was so confused but anyway. But I also found that I liked it a lot better when it was on me than I did, um, than I did when it was off. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna finish the sweater. So what I did do is I ripped back to like here. Um, I put in an afterthought lifeline. So I ripped back to before I separated for the sleeves. I did the increases for the next size and I knit the next size and um, it fits me pretty much perfectly. I again, wish that I had knit it a little longer, 
But it's funny because I was like, oh no, I think this might be too short. But in actuality, it's just a normal size sweater. I just wear gigantic long sweaters all the time. Ow, I just hit myself. Um, so it really just fits like a normal sweater. Um, I would knit it again, maybe a nicer, like, um, like a nicer quality yarn. Um, and if I did, I would knit it longer. But, uh, yeah, I'm not going to put the buds on it, I don't think. But I'm pretty pleased with it. it it's really cozy. Um, it is a bit of a woolly wool, but I find it very soft. I've, I've worn it like five times and, um, I don't even wear it with a tank top underneath. And I'm totally comfortable. I would definitely knit with this, uh, with Cascade 220 Sport again. Um, and the Eco Andean DK again, for sure. There's actually a dress that I kind of want to knit. Um, and it's a, it calls for a sport weight. But yeah, so um, if I have any styled pictures of this by the time I edit this and it goes up, I'll put them in. Otherwise, um, keep an eye out for that on Instagram. Um, yeah, so that's all of my finished objects. <laughs> um, there was a few. Um, and actually, I didn't even show you everything. I knit slippers and an arm warmer for my brother too, but anyway. Uh, let's move on to uh, my next thing, which is works in progress. Okay, got a few. Um, let's start with the shawls. Oh, actually I had another finish. Uh, whatever, I'll show it on the next one. Um, so the gift knitting, like I said, has begun. And um, on Luke's side of the family, we pick a name. As we're not buying gifts for everybody, we're just buying gifts for one person. Um, and I got, uh, it's not going to mean anything to anybody, but I got this woman named Annette. She's an older lady. Um, and I decided to knit her a simple little shawl. And I was actually, okay. So here's what I have so far. Yeah, so it's, um... Okay, so I was going to knit her the Malt Noma shawl, which is a free pattern on Ravelry, and it um, has a feather and fan lace border. But, oh, sorry, I would started the lace and I was screwing it up. It's the simplest lace. I don't know what was going on with me, but I was like, life's too short to struggle with lace. Um, uh, especially because like, I, I don't really know this woman very well, so it's fine. So. I decided to just do garter stitch stripes. So basically what I did um, is I did the body in the plum colorway and I had the yarn tags up here. So it's the Mirasol yarn in the Solka Legato. Um, and it is a 60% merino wool, 20% alpaca, 20% silk yarn. Um, it comes in 50 gram skeins, but the, uh, I mean, the skeins are sold 274 yards. And I think it was, um, something like $11 or $11.50 a skein. So really reasonable to get, a, you know, a shawlette, um, and beautiful colors. I was told that this lady likes purple and gray, so that's what I did. Um... So yes, I think this is called Plum and the silver is called Pearl, maybe? So I just striped in the gray and now I'm going to do a solid portion of gray and then I'm going to do a pretty pico bind off to give it a little bit of extra flair. So I'm using the garter stitch numbers from the Multnomah shawl, but I'm just knitting it all garter stitch. Um, and I have my first, my original little, um, hold on, if I can get her up here, my little matryoshka polymer clay charm um but yeah so it's a beautiful yarn to knit with i have a sensitivity to alpaca when i wear it around my neck i don't have an issue knitting with it i actually quite like knitting with it um but here's my thought when i knit with alpaca last i, th I was using like a really cheap uh, alpaca yarn so I'm, and it was like uh it was just mixed with wool like not even merino so it wasn't very very soft so my thought process is that I will knit this, I'll block it, and then I can wear it around the house a little bit and see if I can do better with this brand of alpaca. Um, and maybe I just have to buy nicer alpaca than what I was buying before. But yeah, so that's that. Uh, my goal is to do four rows a day, and that should give me plenty of rows and plenty of time to get this done and not feel pressured to be worked on it for hours and hours and hours. 
So that's my first um, work in progress. My second work in progress that I want to show you is a shawl that I've been dying to knit since I bought the pattern, I think last last winter, spring, no, it's February, I think. Let me just give myself a little bit of give here. So that is the Homestead Shawl by Melody Hoffman. And here it is so far. I am knitting it in Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool in the oatmeal colorway, which is just a really nice sort of heathered neutral. Um, this is exactly what I wanted color-wise for this shawl. If I, if anything, um, I would have done it in the cream colorway and dyed it with avocados, but it's fine. This is, I've been searching everywhere for this yarn. Um, I had to go all the way to Cambridge to get it. Uh, but yeah, I love it. I love this pattern. It's so relaxing and because it's air and weight, it just flies. It, like this was only a couple days worth of knitting. I learned how to do a lateral braid. But okay, if you've done lateral braids or you've done the homestead shawl before, I cannot, for the life of me, get my gauge to tighten up for the purl row on the other side of the braid. And I mean, I'm pulling that yarn tight. I'm knitting tightly. Um, but I can't, it's still so much looser than the stitches around it. And I don't know how to make it. I don't want to make it tighter. Not that it really matters. It's going to be bunched up around my neck anyway. But uh, this is a gigantic, it's going to be gigantic. And I think it's going to be so, so pretty. Um, and I got a shawl pin, actually. It not a it's not fancy or special or handmade. It's just from Lens Mill. I just wanted to try it out. And if I liked it, then I would probably invest in um, like a nicer one. But I just think this is going to be so warm for Canadian winters. I was... Oh, sorry, I was noticing we've had we had some really cold weather. It was like negative 18 degrees Celsius and my fingering weight shawls just were not enough. <laughs> so um, so I'm, I'm happy to have uh, I'll be happy to have this. Um, I really enjoy working with this yarn. I've not had any problems with it. Um, it's very cost effective. It apparently has natural like lanolin in it and I think I have noticed that while I'm working with it um, and I like that a lot and um, I'm interested to see what happens. Oh, sorry when I block it. I Know some people have been like this is like cardboard like this yarn, but I don't know. I kind of like it I wouldn't knit the shawl again. I think in like a nicer yarn, but for a nice work workhorse shawl um, I like it and I had thought this would be a good way to test the yarn before I bought like a sweater's quantity um, of it to knit maybe um, a cabled sweater or a color work sweater. I could dye the colors myself. Um, I just thought it would be around my neck, which is a really sensitive area, and then I can gauge whether or not it's something I would be able to comfortably wear. So there's that. Um, I'll just put that here. All right. Um, quick, let's just talk about this sock. It's not super exciting. Um, except for the arm, which is beautiful. Uh, this, these were my Halloween socks. I'm still on the first sock. Yeah, guys, that was never gonna happen. But um, I'm knitting the blueberry waffle socks. I've never, well, I've knit a worsted weight sock, which I still have to make the pair um, its partner. But um, yeah, so I'm doing the blueberry waffle socks um, with pretty twisted yarns in the Boogie Nights colorway, which I was calling my Monster Mash socks. Um, it's a beautiful speckled variegated yarn. I love it so much. It's Stellina. I don't know if you can tell. Maybe not. Maybe you can tell in the... Can you tell in the... Maybe not. It's Stellina and it's beautiful. I've never knit with a gold Stellina yarn before. So it was very exciting for me. Um, and yeah, so I knit a longer leg and it's seven inches for this one because I just wanted to make the utmost of this yarn if possible. And um, it, it's so soft and it's not a super dense yarn, which I really like. It makes a really nice stretchy fabric. Um, and I knit on 2.25 millimeter needles, so, and I'm a pretty tight knitter, so generally I get a pretty dense sock. Um, but that one was working up really nice. I'm tr I've been motoring along on it. I've been trying to finish it, at least my first sock. Um, but yeah, and that was a, that yarn was a lovely gift from the dyer. I believe her name is Teresa, um, of Pretty Twisted Yarns. And, uh, it's great. It's great yarn. And I would recommend popping over to her shop, uh, if you have a chance. Um, 
let's talk sweaters. I've got three sweaters on the needles right now. <laughs> uh, two of them are not for me. So let's start with my mom's sweater, which you'll probably be able to see Opie hair all over. But um, she asked for a Veronica Cardi because she tried mine on and loved it. So we went to Shellington and we picked out yarn and it's Cascade 220. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, she picked out, oh, sorry, I was showing the wrong side. This, I don't, it's kind of dark on the screen. Um, there we go. It's a purple and black marled yarn. So it makes a beautiful fabric. Um, and I have knit the one front and I'm now not quite half, I'm not I'm like maybe a third of the way down the, the back. I'm knitting the second size. Um, schmutz all over it. But yeah, so we went to the store and we picked up the yarn together and that was really fun. Uh, it's funny because I remember going to the store with Luke and seeing this yarn color and being like, oh my gosh, my mom would look so good in this color. She wears so much plum. Um, I have to knit something like out of this for her. And then we walked into the store, me and my mom, and she immediately just went straight to this skein and was like, this color. And like, we even looked at other colors and she just kept coming back to this one. And I was like, I knew it. I knew you, mom. So of course this is by um, Shannon Cook. Um, Everybody is knitting Veronica's right now. I've already knit a Veronica in Cascade 220 in a mustard yellow colorway. Um, but I almost wish I'd knit it in this because it's so, so nice. Um, but yeah, so that's coming along. Uh, this isn't a gift knit. She bought the yarn, but um, in all honesty, she's probably going to get it as part of her Christmas present because it's going to take a while. And she obviously knows what it looks like because I've shown her all the progress. So it's okay, mom. <laughs> You're not spoiling anything. Um, yeah, and then I also started a sweater for Luke. Out of Cascade 220. I can't help it. It's so affordable. It's so affordable. It's $9 a skein, and I can knit a sweater in like six skeins. So I keep going back to it. Would I love to knit like a luxury sweater? Of course I would. But if, if I only knit luxury yarn sweaters, I'd never get to knit a sweater. So now I get to knit all the sweaters. So anyway, these are the colors Luke picked. They're Ravenclaw colors. Movie colors, anyway. Um, yes, we did pick that on purpose. Yes, it is basically, we're calling it his, um, his uh, Ravenclaw uh, Quidditch sweater, because it's sort of a rugby looking sweater, I guess. That's what it looks like to me. But anyway, the pattern, and it's gonna look like a mess, I don't even, is the Drange, Drange sweater by Stephen West. Um, not his typical, I think it's one of his older patterns, the original's knit Brooklyn Tweed, but, oh my gosh, sorry, it is like, there's so many ends, and the thing got all looped up in my bag, because I have three sweaters being stored in that bag. But um, anyway, it's top down. This is the back. It uses Japanese short rows, which I'd never done before. That was an experience. I had to knit the collar twice. <laughs> and then um, let's see how it like, so it, it goes down. It's sort of this like kind of cool boxy collar. It's not like your typical rounded collar. And then it has these textured stripes all down the yoke and then a stockinette body so i'm obviously still knitting on the yoke i think i'm on the first part of the yoke still <laughs> um but otherwise like i really like it i think it's gonna look really good he has a ravenclaw pin that he wants to put on it um and i think it'll just be really warm and cozy and it's pretty soft and um yeah, it was a lot of fun to knit that collar once I got the hang of the Japanese short rows. I just think it's a really cool effect that it has. You should look up the pattern and uh, see how it looks. I mean, it looks amazing in Brooklyn Tweed, but um, I just couldn't, I can't, sorry, I can't justify that. Luke and I are doing a craft miss this year, so I'm knitting him the sweater and then he's sewing me a skirt and he, we bought this like adorable ghost fabric for that. I should have brought it in, but I didn't story of my life um and then the other sweater I bought I'm uh, sorry that I'm making is um out of that Barocco Vintage DK which is an acrylic wool blend um and I've knit with it before and I really like it it's very soft um it has pretty decent stitch definition I mean you're not gonna be able to see it much on this but so I had bought a charcoal gray um 
And then here it is. It is the Barnyard Guernsey by Nora Gon. It is a free sweater pattern. Um, and it's originally published, I think, in 1991. Um, so yeah, I'm knitting it. It's a worsted weight pattern, but I'm knitting it in DK. Uh, I'm knitting the extra large size in order to get, like, the medium. Sorry, that's not an alarm on my phone. In order to get sort of a medium. Um, I added ribbing on the bottom because I don't like a rolled hem on me. I shortened this up a bit. I'm not going to knit it quite as long because I don't want it to like be fully tunic length. I have a lot of tunic length sweaters um, and I'm sure I'll be knitting some of them and this doesn't have to be one but uh, it's got pearl patterning going on which again you can't really see unfortunately in this light but hopefully when it's done I can get some good pictures of it and I'm just using this to mark my round. It's one of my pumpkins. So cute. This one got like a gross hair in it. And I was like, well, can't sell that. Guess it's mine. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's that. And I'm housing those sweaters in a new project bag by Luke. Here it is. It's a big sweater size bag. We were testing out sort of a possibility for a sweater bag in the future, um, but I love this fabric. It has Salem on it. I love Salem. Luke and I went there to celebrate our anniversary a couple years ago. Um, this fabric is just from Walmart. Um, and then it has green gingham on the inside. And um, yeah, I, it was a flat white. The fabric, I dyed it just with a bit of ecru dye to, to kind of make it look a little more antique-y. But yeah, so there's that. Those are all the works in progress that I have to show you today. Um, there are other socks and other stuff that I have on the needles, but again, I'll show those to you next week probably if I find that they're worth showing. Um, so let's do the next bit, which is something I don't usually have. Um, Stuff I bought for knitting. Uh, I only have one thing. I, obviously, I bought a ton of yarn. I had bought the Fisherman's Wool, but you've already seen it. I bought the, all the Cast Kitty 20. You've seen it. The only thing I bought that you haven't seen yet <laughs> um, is the skein of sock yarn. Um, this is Opal's Vince, one of the Opal Vincent Van Gogh colors. It's a self-patterning sock. Inspired by this painting. I love Vincent Van Gogh. He's one of my favorite artists. The art history nerd in me um, Couldn't resist and I think this line is discontinued So I felt good about buying it because I knew that it probably wouldn't be there again when I went back um, Yeah, I don't, if you don't know I was an art history and a history uh, art history major and a history minor in university so uh, the idea of having some art history socks uh, really appeals to me, but I can't cast it on because I've all of my sock needles are taken up and all of them are first socks and I don't want to have piles of first socks lying around. So I have to finish at least one pair before I cast these on, but I'm dying to cast these on. Like I keep, I keep the skein on my coffee table just so I can keep picking it up and looking at it. Um, and I've never used opal yarns. So yeah, I can't wait to cast that on. Hmm. Um, yeah, so that's really it in terms of the like yarny knitting content. I've only been talking for 50 minutes. Um, so if that's all you wanted to uh, hear about today, that's cool. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Otherwise, I have um, news from the cabinet and uh, just some daily life stuff. What do I call that? my life, etc. So anyway, if you're still here and you want to hear about the shop, um, we have a couple things coming to you hopefully very soon. My yarn dyeing came to a bit of a standstill because I ran out of citric acid and I had to get it uh, sent to me from Amazon. Uh, hopefully it's coming tomorrow. But um, I did get a few skeins dyed up and um, one of them is a pre-order that I will be putting up shortly. Um, uh, and I'll post on Instagram for that as well. But we... Um, we have a new pattern, um, like a new bag pattern, and I love this fabric. Um, I just thought it was kind of fun because, you know, otters, specimens, but also like the moons, there was something kind of like 
cool and tarot-y about it. So I thought it fit pretty good into our theme. So we will have, um, and this is a new size. Actually, let me get um, the other bag so you can see the difference. Okay. So um, we also have two more of these ones coming. So there'll be, I think, three or four of them in the shop. Three of them, I think. Three of them. Um, but yes, so this is our sock sized um, bag. And then this is our one to two skein size bag, the otter one. So you can see it fits a little bit more. It's more the size of my fox bag if you've been watching for a while. Um, and we lined this with this fun coordinating plaid. I love this bag. Um, luckily there was like just enough for me to have a little like smaller even than our sock size bag. Um, but yeah, oh, and I wanted to show you in this round of bags, which we're really excited about. We have our little, oh, hold on. Oh, can I show it? We have our little like cotton tags with our logo on it, which is really exciting. We didn't get them in um, to the last order of bags because they were taking a while to get here. But um, yeah, so we'll have two of the one to two skein, uh, like the two skein shawl bags. Um, yeah, shawl bags. And then we'll have two of the sock size bags in this print. Um, we only have sock size bags of this one. And then we will be doing um, a few Christmas bags, um, uh, but I didn't bring the fabric with me, silly me. But um, yes, so we will have some Christmas bags in there for you. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, yarn wise, I just wanted to show you some of the new stuff because um, I'll have a few returning colorways. I'll have um, Remington number one, Come Into the Garden mod, Dry Lavender, and probably a couple other ones, but I did dye some new ones. Uh, the first one I wanted to show you was the Christmas yarn, which you'll have to pardon the kind of the untidiness of the skein because I haven't like redone it yet, but it's called a Dickensian Christmas. My thought was, um, Okay, I love A Christmas Carol. I love reading that book. I love watching the films. I stage managed an amazing production of it. Um, and I love this, like, I love the, like, smoky sootiness of, you know, Victorian London. And, you know, it, you can get beautiful, sweet candy cane, gingerbread, um, vintage Christmas colorways um, from amazing dyers. Um, but I thought maybe something with a little bit of that grunginess would be fun as something else. So um, it's got um, a sort of a, a parchmenty colored um, base, which I dyed specifically to replicate the look of parchment with some brown speckles and spruce green speckles and emerald green speckles and burgundy speckles and red speckles. Um, and it makes this kind of like fun, um, just, I don't know, sooty, vintage like antiqued skeins. So this is on the singles base, my antiquity singles base. Um, and I will have a pre-order up for both. Um, I didn't, um, I, okay, sorry. I will have a pre-order up for the singles base as well as my exhibition sock base, which is 8020 Merino Nylon. Um, I don't have that skein here because I still need to put the brown speckles on it. I didn't get a chance to put the brown speckles on. Um, but I will probably have about 10 of each. So I'll put, be putting that up in the next day or two. Hopefully it'll be up already. But uh, yeah, so that's my Christmas colorway. Um, and then I dyed this colorway, which is like my new favorite colorway that I've ever dyed. I want to knit a beautiful like sport weight or DK weight shawl out of it. Um, it's called Sparrows and Ink Caps. It's blowing out a little bit because of the white. Sparrows and Ink Caps. Um, and it is inspired by a couple things. Um, we have a lot of shaky ink cap mushrooms that grow around our neighborhood. And I think that they are so funny and whimsical looking. And, um, and then we also have a family of sparrows that lives in her wall outside of our kitchen window. And I love them. I love like whistling to them. They sit on our, on our windowsill and they just kind of hang out there and they have their little babies and it's awesome. So I thought... You know, I love these sparrows. I love these mushrooms. I'm gonna dye a colorway. So it's a it's a white creamy base with gray and brown and ecru and black speckles, and then there's some blue speckles and some orange speckles, and um, I just think it is so pretty. I just want to show you. Hold on. 
look at this little bit of speckling right in here. Oh, I love it so much. It's going to be so hard to part with these. Um, but I hope you guys love them as much as I love them. Um, I will have these two skeins and maybe one skein in singles of it. Um, but this one, if you wanted this colorway, I could custom dye this one. Um, and then the last thing that's kind of brand new that I wanted to show you was my first ever mini skein set. Um, I decided to do a uh, Stephen King inspired mini skein set. Um, and here they are. I just finished winding them up. I had posted on Instagram on the Cabinet of Kiro's Instagram the full skeins. But here they are re-skeined into minis. I'll show you what they are, um, and I haven't, I'm going to have more interesting names for them, but for now I'll just tell you what they're based on. So this one is Pet Cemetery. Actually, this one's going to be called um, A Man Grows What He Can and Tends It. Um, and it's inspired by the black cat with green eyes, Winston Churchill. And then I have Carrie's Prom Dress. It's actually a lot darker than it's sh showing up which is like a dark burgundy, maroon, purpley um, colorway inspired obviously by her prom dress. Um, the Shining, which I did in sort of icy blues with some blood spatter in there. This one, um, I wasn't sure about it until I saw it twisted up and I was like, oh yeah, I like that. So there you go. It has got some like dark, dark navy blue in there as well. Uh, this is Salem's Lot, um, which is, um, it's the, I did the colors of like a really bloody sunset, um, because it's about vampires, um, with some black speckling in there. So here and there, there's some black speckles. I think if I did this colorway again, I'd put more black speckles in, but I mean, really the main part of it is the sunset. So yeah, but Salem's Lot. And the last one is Pennywise, which is, of course, from It. Um, I took the colors from the new movie. So you've got this sort of, like, grungy, like, like gray and ecru with some spatters of red and burgundy and orange. And then this one, I think, turned out just perfectly. It was exactly what I wanted. So I will be selling this. There will be, I believe, four or five. There should be five of them. Um in the shop update and if you um again if you really really like just one of the colorways um i'd be happy to dye that custom for you just send me a message on etsy um so yeah that's really all the new shop stuff that i want to show you um i have some new stitch markers but they're not done yet um so i really can't show them but i'll be posting that on instagram and of course you can follow us at uh at cabinet of dot curios um and find us on etsy at cabinet of curios yarns .etsy.com. um yeah so that's it for the shop <sighs> oh my gosh what time am i just about an hour oh my okay um I'm so hungry why am I so hungry I just had lunch okay last segment and that of course is my life etc okay so much has happened um I've just been so busy like seeing people like working like on the shop stuff um it's just been crazy. Uh, on Hall not on Halloween, but um, in October I did um, a Castle Kill Bride. You'll, you might remember if you've been watching for a while, I did like the Victorian Canada 150 getup. So they had me back in October for a ghost tour of the castle. So I wore the same dress um, and I wore my Crimson Peak shawl, which is my mustard seed shawl by Boo Knits. And um, I did like my makeup kind of to make me look sort of dead and creepy and uh, I basically just stood in one of the rooms and told ghost stories to people who came by for this, their self-guided tour and that was so much fun and then after that um, there was a lecture on spirit photography which was really cool. Um, there wasn't really any new information, I've done a lot of like my own research on that stuff but it was a really cool um, just sort of vibe for the night and it was a lot of fun. I don't usually have plans. Oh, sorry, for Halloween. So it was nice to have something to do. Um, 
went to Toronto. So yeah, we did the AGO. And then we also went to this Harry Potter inspired shop called Curiosa um, in Toronto. And it was so cute. I bought a scarf. Um, that, it's like a black infinity scarf and it has the um, Marauder's Map printed all over it. But Luke and I just did, we participated in the Reddit exchange the Harry Potter exchange, which, um, if you don't know what that is, they do sort of themed secret Santas, and we thought, well, why not? Let's try it out. Um, so we bought a few little things for our secret Santa, um, partner. We got her little, like, Hermione pin, and, um, a, a Obliviate, why am I pointing to, it's not clothing, and a little notebook that says Obliviate on it, and, um, and I embroidered her a hummingbird Patronus, and... I sent her one of my squid tentacles as a necklace, um, care of the giant squid, and some little birdie bots every flavor bean. So that was fun. And then we went to the Harry Potter themed bar in downtown um, Toronto called the Lockhart, which was really good. It was so cute. Um, if you have been thinking about going to the Lockhart, I suggest going when it opens at five o'clock. Do not wait. Um, get in line. Like, get there at 4.30, 4.45, because we got there, like, just before 5, and we snagged a table right away, but there were tons of people waiting outside. So, definitely, definitely get in line for that. Um, it's really cute, though. Really worth it. And, um, yeah, I've got some Christmas stuff coming up, but, of course, I'll talk about that when it comes up, um, when it starts happening. Yeah, um, I've been watching. I've been watching some television. I watched The Five, which is a really good crime drama. I finished watching The Killing, which was pretty good, except for that ending. I don't know how I felt about the ending. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's like there's just been so much stuff happening that I can't even remember all of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been good. Um, I've been good. I've had. Um, I don't know if it's just a changing of the seasons, but I've been kind of off a little bit. Um, I got sick twice. It was like this awful cycle where I would get sick and then I would get better and I would try to record and then it wouldn't work. And then two days later I would get sick again. <laughs> and so I was just in this cycle of being ill and I don't usually get sick, so I don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah. Uh, does anybody else get that kind of sick where like your skin hurts and your joints hurt? There was no knitting for me while I was sick. No knitting in bed. I was just lying there like a, I don't even know, like a rag doll. But yeah, so you know what? I think I'm going to leave it there because my voice is starting to go and I need to take Opie out to do his business. Will he do it? Who knows? I have no idea. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and um, I missed you guys so much. I missed podcasting. Um, there was just sort of this whole thing where I kept trying to record and it kept not working and then I just start getting resentful and almost like fearful of my computer where like I just didn't even want to try because I couldn't face the idea of like having it not work again. Like already I'm like my like ugh, chest is like tight. Um, oh, the other thing, should have mentioned this before. Um, um, yeah, sorry, <laughs> was that I wanted to do a live episode, um, and I still want to do that. Um, I'm thinking about doing it next week, next Thursday. Hold on, let me double check my calendar what day of the week that is. <laughs> Can you hear my voice getting gravelly? Oh my, should have brought a glass of water, Joy. Okay, yeah, so I wanted to try doing a live episode next Thursday evening at maybe... I think 7.30. Um, it'll be really dark in here, so I cannot promise amazing lighting at, by any stretch. But um, it'll be fun to, like, knit and chat at the very least. Um, I don't know how much progress I'll have on the rest of the stuff, so. I, I mean, it may just be us sitting and knitting and chatting. So, who knows? Uh, but let's, let's say next Thursday, the 23rd at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I think that kind of is still evening for most people um but yeah I might do like a separate mini video just to put that out there um in the next couple days but we'll see 
Uh, anyway, so that's it for me. Uh, if you would like to find me elsewhere on the internet, you can find me on Ravelry as Dabblejoy and on Instagram as Rhineland Story. And of course, you can find our shop, Cabinet of Curios, on Etsy and on Instagram, um, Cabinet of Dot Curios. So um, it was wonderful talking to you. I hope you guys have a great uh, rest of your week, a great weekend. I hope you work on projects that you love and spend time with people that you care about. Um, so yeah, happy knitting, happy living, over and out.